Welcome to our video. Zakaria warns how Putin's regime could look worse. CNN's Fareed Zakaria breaks down a revealing New Yorker interview with Tatiana Stanovaya, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center, who discussed the elites surrounding Russian President Vladimir Putin who are disillusioned with his leadership. I would like to focus on it. Russia's Victory Day celebration this week, mocking the Soviet Union's defeat of Nazi Germany in World War II, may not have seemed restrained with its columns of troops standing to attention, marching under the tricolor. But it was a muted display. The Kremlin decided to forego the traditional flyover of warplanes. The parade featured only one tank. More than 20 cities canceled their ceremonies, and a national march honoring veterans was scrapped. Officials cited security concerns as the reason for the paired-back events, but President Vladimir Putin might also have been unwilling to ostentatiously celebrate a 78-year-old victory when current news from the Ukrainian front is bleak. Best estimates say that as many as 200,000 Russian troops have been killed or wounded, many troops on the front line lack proper supplies, and a Ukrainian counteroffensive looms. Still, in his speech, Putin appeared unbowed by these pressures, casting himself as the defender of a country beset by the censure of Western globalist elites. He may want to start worrying about his own elites. From the outside, it's easy to see Putin as an all-powerful, strong man who rules Russia by decree and has manipulated and mobilized his people behind him. But in a fascinating interview with Isaac Chartner of The New Yorker, Tatiana Stanovaya, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center, describes a more vulnerable Putin. And that is in part because Russian elites have begun to grow disillusioned with his leadership and fear the outcome of what they increasingly see as an unwinnable war. Stanovaya's Putin is a leader caught between two sets of elites. On the one hand, there is the progressive elite, made up of technocrats, regional governors, and senior officials who view Putin as too extreme and worry about the effect of Western economic sanctions. On the other hand, there are what she calls the patriots, who see Putin as too soft. These voices are diffuse and plentiful, and they include men such as Yevgeny Prigozhin, the head of the mercenary Wagner group, as well as the heads of the security services and members of Putin's own party. These two groups align in their belief that Putin is mishandling the war effort. A terrifying reality that seems to emerge from this picture is that Putin, a man who started Europe's biggest land war since World War II, a man whose policies are nothing short of extreme in the eyes of the world, is far less radical than the warmongering elite in his own country. Stanovaya paints a worrying portrait of governance, Far from the sure-footed, centralized, vicious regime many in the West have come to nurture in their imaginations. She tells The New Yorker that arrests are carried out by multiple agencies, sometimes without Putin's knowledge. Putin's own decisions appear confused based on which competing faction influences him at the moment. And Putin's view can be at odds with his own agencies. For example, Putin sees Prigozhin as a hero even as the federal security services and technocrats view him as a threat. Putin also faces more severe economic pressures than is widely believed. The Wall Street Journal reported this week that pollution data belies the Kremlin's claim that its industrial production is recovering. Pollution in industrial regions has dropped 6.2% over the past year, more than during the peak of the pandemic. Russian official statistics claim that annual industrial production actually rose by 1.2% in March. And Jeff Sonnenfeld, a professor at the Yale School of Management, has pointed out that Russia's energy revenue is down as a result of the G7 price cap on Russian oil. Meanwhile, its budget deficit has soared. There is one silver lining for Putin. Whatever Russian elites may think of him, he is still overwhelmingly popular with the public. He has an enviable 83% approval rating, according to the independent Levada Center. Moreover, the public does support his ill-considered war. But according to Stanovaya, that support just gives cover to increasing repression. It also keeps elites who may privately oppose the war from speaking out.
The danger is not that the Putin regime may collapse from within, she says, but that even under him, it could transform into something monstrous, ruthless, inhumane, a reign of fear. As bad as the Putin regime looks now in Russia, it could actually get worse.